few announcements and then we'll introduce our speakers. Herb? Just stand right here in case somebody comes in. Okay, here, get your pictures. You want to share it, Thank you. No, 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 no. Not all of them. Not all, just the ones of you. Uh, business. Uh, Tommy Rainey wants to discuss a living history program in 2014. Uh, I see we've got a speaker next month, and I tell them we'd love to talk to him. We would, wouldn't we? Uh, by Living History Program, you know he's going to get the reenactors out with their guns and shoot if he'll find a place that'll let him do it, uh, maybe the fairgrounds. Uh, but he would also like to have uh, shingle makers or spinning wheelers or whatever he could get. He, it's called Living History, in other words. He'd like those things demonstrated. And right now he needs ideas as badly as anything. Uh, Johnny Wilbanks can't participate in the candidate speaking. And is it going to be next? It's going to be the Saturday before the election. Okay. Do you have a date? The Saturday before the election. May the fifth. Okay. <laughs> Saturday before. Saturday before the election. Christina's thinking to give you a receipt for that. The election is the seventh, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll be Saturday before. Thank you. Now, I cannot get a hold of Libby Brack. I've tried. She has two telephones. Uh, she don't answer one, and she won't return messages on the other. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, uh, J Johnny uh, was so frustrated that he got a, a, an appointment with a cardiologist who so wouldn't have to come. Uh, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I need to know more about this. Well, uh, Libby's going to do the speech. She's going to do a speech. If, you know, yeah. She had planned it to start with. Yeah. And uh, Mark and I were lucky enough to pin her down and talk to her yeah. one time. How'd you do it? I just loved being over there when she was there. And, uh, you know, we were going, she was going to get back with us on all these different things, and that's been what three weeks ago. And I haven't heard anything from her. Haven't been able. I, well, I talked to I talked to her the day I told her Mark was going to be tied up this week out of town for two weeks, and what all the circumstances I was in, it uh, was just going to turn it back over. Well, that's just three weeks, huh? Well, I, I, I need to talk to her, particularly if I'm going to do anything, uh, and I don't know how. Uh, as I understand it, uh, at least as uh, Mark sees it, uh, I would uh, get a list of candidates and announce them, and then i get somebody else to tell them when five minutes was up, and, it, and so it's not all that complicated. I do have a college education, but uh, I, I need to know what does she expect and what does she want done. Uh, it's going to be worth it because, as I understand it, each candidate will pay fifty dollars to attend. Huh? I I turned it back over to her. We're not getting anything now. Right? We're not. No, she's doing the. She's going to keep the fifty dollars. It's just twenty five. <laughs> if you want, if you want to do it, I, you're welcome to do it. I I turned it back over to her. Okay. Her original plan. Now, yeah. as Mark explained it to me, each candidate pays fifty dollars. The radio station gets twenty five, uh, and the other party gets twenty five. And I thought, well, if ten candidates show up, and uh, like I said, I have a college education. That's two hundred fifty dollars, isn't it? Uh, and I, I want to look into it, but you're going to have to tell her to get in touch with me uh, or something. I can't, I can't find a thing about what I'm supposed to do. Uh, Johnny can't participate. May I assume that no one knows anything about the old Guyton Methodist Church Cemetery cotton plant? Do you have a report or anything to say about it? I was going to ask Mr. Tommy Covington, what, what do you know about that? It's uh, just above the rainy place on the other side. And I have found out since we doused that the big house that was in front of it to the west of it is where Thornton got and, and that bunch was raised in you know, their city drugstore way that <coughs> one sent over the two. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Really. But I talked to Dickie Guyton, uh, you know, Dickie and Dr. Guyton Barney Jones. Uh, and from what they told me it wasn't there direct and so uh, through the all of them are buried in uh, academy. But I thought 
thought you might know something since it no, right don't. there at the rain place. But well, you know, there was a lot of black guys. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What do you think it, it's a possibility it's a black cemetery? But well, it's not going to affect my pursuit or interest. I'm not all say, the more. I'm going to say back then, part of it is, but if Mr. Thompson was born and raised right there, yes. just they talked about a big house, a thing there, that was his, his people's house. Uh, and he was my back door neighbor. Our, our backyard was going at Blue Mountain. Um, yeah. But I haven't gotten any further than that. I still want to go down there with a the probe. Yes, I want you, I personally want you to douse around the edge of that yeah. cemetery and see if we can't find some stones. Milton made me a probe, <coughs> and I've since wound up with another one that I think is what it is. It is. We can uh, get a horse down in the dirt without the trouble. Be need one longer, huh? Now, what they said he did, now this cemetery is 2.2 acres of cemetery. It was huge. Really? Can anybody tell you exactly where the last place was? Just a second. I'll take it back. Matt probably can't. I can't. Matt probably can't. You can baptize it. That'll take care of it. Matt probably can't. I'll take it back. Matt probably can't. You probably want to go for it. Maybe you can set the front nail back there with me. Well, I'll tell you what. I won't talk to you about it. I got got that that stone. Stone. No, I haven't heard anything that I need now. I'll tell you when I find out something. I'll be The Confederate stone for Patrick Henry Clayton. Clinton. Uh, Mavis was Clinton. in the. Huh? Patrick Henry Clifton. That's Clifton. what I did. Clayton. Clifton. Uh, and Mavis unveiled the stone. Uh, and uh, I made lots of pictures and. Uh, uh, we made lots of pictures uh, of everything that was going on. The reenactors were there with their guns. I ran backwards in the first volley they fired. Uh, I was trying to make their picture. Uh, and I didn't know it was that loud. Uh, I see. And what else did I like? I liked, uh, uh, there were about 20 people, 25, in the old Union Church of Christ churchyard. We, uh, it, was, it was a fine Saturday <coughs> afternoon. Uh, the weather was beautiful. There were chocolate chip cookies. I mean, what more could you ask for? And we remembered a man uh, who served in uh, the Confederate Army, was taken to prison in Illinois, yeah. uh, and uh, returned to us as a galvanized Yankee. But they said they loved him anyway, and they still wanted to put his stone out there, and so did I. Uh, also, I found out that people who are used to singing with musical instruments uh, have trouble singing in a churchyard where there is no musical instrument. Uh, and uh, we concluded some of our service with a hymn, and we all started together and finished it three different times. Some of them were almost a verse behind We needed a little PA system out there, is what we needed to do. Well, get. I suggested that somebody go into the Union Church of Christ building and drag their piano out, and they said, no, it's no problem. I said, we seen it in there. We cut the piece in there. Uh, that's a nice looking piano. But we did have a PA speaker in there, if anybody was That would help. It could be used if we did My friend in the Methodist Church in Corinth told me that they moved their piano out of the hallway, but put in a new one, and somebody stole it. And I told him, nobody ever stole our piano. And he said, nobody's ever seen your piano. <laughs> Tim Needham will be our speaker on the 21st, uh, May the 21st. Uh, he wants, I wanted him to talk about metal detecting. Anywhere in Tippecanoe County he wanted to, except at Polly Calvary's house. He better not go there. Uh, but he said he wanted to talk about metal detecting and wooden <clears throat> toys. And uh, has he had a wooden toy display here? Several years. Several years ago. Is it time for another one? Uh, if he would like to have one, he's extremely tired. Come in. I have a picture for you. Is there an update on the camera project? Document copier. Yep. Yeah. I've got all that out in my car. Oh, here's the paper. Thank you, sir. So you have the goods. I have all that. You have all the goods. Oh, I'm so excited. Mr. Stewart, if you ever did business, I'm sure yes. you did with our supervisors. We'll have a record of them, and we're going to photograph them. And 
uh, we're going to leave the records intact and put them at the old jail house, which is now our archive. Uh, we want to digitize everything we can get our hands on. Uh, the Mormons, Latter day Saints, have been helpful in the big books, you know, the big tall county courthouse books. But uh, uh, we want one wrong. We want it to stay budget. <laughs> and uh, these two people right here are planning it and designing it, putting it together. Uh, new members are uh, Ed and Betty Beavers. Take a look at them. Let them know who you are. There's Betty. May I say this soon? The other one is Ed. Get your flavor. He's had coffee. Uh, we have uh, two out of town members to our historical society presently, one from Florida. Uh, and uh, one from Olive Branch, uh, and um, as I understand it, Marcia said that Shirley McKenzie uh, from Germantown also wants to be an out-of-town member. I, I, excuse me, I gave her, she bought her, uh, two copies of the Heritage. I needed to know that. And I emailed them to her, received her check already, and I gave her your email address, Tommy's telephone. We got a cover. <laughs> <laughs> I got another one to share. Okay. Uh, I've already shared yours. Well, fine. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Zach Stewart is the retired Northern District Highway Commissioner. Uh, and in Jumper Town, I just sing your praises every time I see the sign. I love highways, and I don't mind being taxed to pay for them. Uh, and one day, we're all going to go down Highway 4 together and just have a 15 and have the best time. I mean, we really appreciate that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, I, I, just, uh, I just found uh, Bill Miles, who's written a book called Scribe Among Pharisees. Uh, and he said in his book that uh, Mr. Stewart went to uh, a ribbon cutting of a four-lane highway in Lee County, I believe he said. And uh, after the ceremony was over, he went to a restaurant, uh, and it was crowded, and nobody noticed him. And believe me, that can be painful. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it happened every day when you do A fellow at the Magnolia Bible College is shaking hands when he got to me. He told me his name, and I told him mine. And I said, and I'm not the ordinary jury, and I'm the famous one. I said, you remember me, don't you? And he said, uh -huh. <laughs> so he ate his meal alone, was feeling down in the mouth, he went to the cashier, and she said, has anybody ever told you you look exactly like Zach Stewart? And he said, yes ma'am. She said, it makes you mad, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we read uh, in our newspaper about your presentation, The Outlaws in North Mississippi, uh, and I've been authorized to tell you that when they're uh, in Union County, they're outlaws from Union County. When he's in Tippa County, they're outlaws from Tippa County. Uh, but uh, he didn't say where they were from, but that's the way it's been announced at least twice. I appreciate your being here. Do you want my stand? Yes. Do you mind having your picture made while you talk? Yes. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Jerry, shove that door. Okay. I'll do that. This gives me back in my native county. A lot of people don't know this, but I was born in Tipper County, Limits. Just east of the crossroad there, about 200 yards on the left, house is gone. You know, when you're in the public office, uh, Run the public office, you're going to try to tie yourself to every community, everybody. <laughs> I tell you, you're not going to miss a trick. I was, couldn't help but when I was going to the museum, by the way, I, this is my first trip in. Y'all got a nice museum here. It really is. It's very interesting. But I saw a Yancey name in there, and that reminded me of Jess Yancey. Y'all probably don't remember Jess Yancey. He was district attorney for this area. He lived in Calhoun County, but he was up here going to speak at the courthouse up here. And uh, he was a good speaker. And after his speech, he went 
down and was mixing the rump model with a cr uh, crowd there, and this fella said, Mr. Yancey said, uh, we got a lot of Yanceys here in Tipper County. He said, you ain't been to it? He said, they're pretty good folks. He said, yes, sir. He said, you can never down one of them. <laughs> 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 so, we we, we tried, tried to get connected. Uh, you mentioned the graveyard there a while ago. Uh, that you found. Now that was not unusual in the highway department to find a graveyard that nobody knew about. And if you ever go to uh, Memphis, you go up highway, well y'all probably don't go up highway 78, but the olive branch of Goodman Road. It's mm -hmm. highway 302. Yeah. Next time you go across it, it's a pretty straight road, but you get out there and you'll see a little crook in it. And what happened is we surveyed and had that road laid out and we was putting a crook in it to miss a graveyard that was on the left, going west. But when we put that crook in it, we didn't know, nobody else knew that there was a graveyard on the right. <laughs> and so we got into some graves over there, 17 graves that we had to move. And um, you have to try to go make every effort possible and then wind up in court and get the judge to let you go ahead and move those graves. And we got in one is a steel. It had a steel thing. We knocked it off and I went and looked in at the person that was there. Of course, they dried up and a little hair. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. Yeah, there was been a mistake. It was made. It was put out the first news release about uh, what I was going to talk about. Of course, at New Albany, we had a big crowd eh, uh, down there, and uh, they thought I was going to talk about Union County outlaws. Well, <laughs> really, <laughs> the closest we're going to get is Chickasaw County, and that's very rickety. But most of this takes place in Kentucky and Tennessee. Most of what I've got will have to say. And what I want to talk about is the Hart Brothers. Has any of you ever heard of the Hart Brothers? <laughs> Most people had. And how I got interested in it, somewhere vaguely back in my memory, I remember some of my kinfolk talking about the Hart Brothers and Moses Stigall. And uh, I was kin to the Stigall. Down in Pontotoc County, there's Stigall everywhere, and I'm kin to every damn one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I remembered there was a connection between the Hart brothers, so I got to look at trying to find out about the Hart brothers. And uh, you won't find any books written about them. Uh, you'll find you can go on the internet and you can Google Hart brothers, and you'll find a lot of stories. Most all the stories are very simple. They are, uh, they are very just a little bit, but uh, most of them is very short, and uh, I found it quite interesting. And so I began to read and to look up and study about the Hart Brothers. They were known as America's first serial killers. Now that's uh, not a name that we'd like to be remembered by. But uh, that's what they, they were known at, or had gained the reputation of being the first serial killer. They say there's never any books written about it. But uh, your daughter wealthy, and she did in a, in a musical that she had written. And I didn't know that she wrote musical. You know, your daughter is one of our Mississippi writers. And uh, she, in The Robber Baron, uh, she had the Hart Brothers two heads in there, you'll find out why. Two heads are better than one. <laughs> <laughs> but to go back and pick up on the Hart Brothers, uh, where did these people come from? They're, they came over, their parents came over from Scotland back in the 1700s. And uh, there was these two brothers. Now some People think they're cousins, some think they were brothers. Uh, Wiley Hart and Makaja Hart. 
that were that was their names, and, and uh, apparently that was not their real name. Is Willie uh, McConjure was known as William, and uh, Wiley, who was known as Little Hart, was Joshua, and they think because that they, they changed their names just to sort of obey the law back at that time. But uh, they came over and they were Tories. They were loyal to the British, loyal to the king of England. And this was right prior to uh, the Revolutionary War. One of them was born in 1817, uh, another was 1770. And they were living in North Carolina. And they, were been, they would have been very small boys when the Revolutionary War started. But they, and, and of course it was not unusual in the Civil War, and certainly in the Revolutionary War, for young people, you know, eight, 10, 12 year old kids to fight in the war. Well, they were in the Battle of King's Mountain. Now, I'd not heard of King's Mountain until I started looking into this, but uh, they were at the Battle of King's Mountain, and uh, <coughs> the loyalists, the ones that are loyal to the, uh, this country here, or the Patriots, they uh, they defeated, and there was not any British in this war at the uh, Battle of Kings Mountain. But anyway, they uh, they were in it. They were uh, the Tories were defeated, and. Uh, because of their Tory connection, they weren't too welcome back in their community. So that's, a lot of people think, well, that's why they took off on such a spree of killing. But uh, there was uh, several people there at King's Mountain, where one in particular, I want you to remember his name, Silas McGee. You'll probably see a grave marker there somewhere. And I'll mention something about these pictures. I don't know how to operate that, and that's why I just got her running. <laughs> Mountain, they lived around that area, but they never was welcome back into their community there in North Carolina, so they fled to Tennessee. And then they built a cabin there uh, out of Knoxville. And in the meantime, they, uh, my conjure, he had married, well, he had two women. I don't know where he was married to one and had another. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Wiley, the young one, well, he wanted him a wife too, so he went and got him a wife named Sally Rice. And she was married by a father who was a Methodist priest. Uh, but the first crime that they was known to have committed was they robbed a William Lambert. He was a young fellow, young Methodist preacher himself. And in his Bible, he had, he had the signature of George Washington in there. Well, uh, McCodgen Hart, he was a Tory. He didn't like George Washington, but he did say he was a brave and good man. And so there, I don't, we don't know why they let uh, Lambert live, but that was the only fellow, the only crime that they ever committed that the person they left him alive. And uh, they went on into uh, Tennessee there. And there they robbed the fellow. And they saw the calling card was when they killed somebody, they cut them open, fill them up with rock, throw them back up, and try to sink them in the stream. Now that's, that's terrible. <laughs> well, that's, that was not uncommon for the these two fathers. And they they were so vicious that one of them, well it was Makaja, the older 
big car, but call it big heart, but little heart. Big heart is his gruesome, but busted the brains out of one of his kids against a tree because of his crime. So you can see what kind of people. It still bothers me to even mention that. Uh, but they went on this this crime spree. Is just killing one person after another. Somewhere around 45 different people that they killed over and about a four or five year period of time. And, uh, but in one of their crimes that they committed was that they were going to see this Silas McBee. I told you to remember his name, Silas McBee. They were going because he was a squire or a justice court judge there in Kentucky. Kentucky was a new territory, of course, it was had become a state, but it was in the very formative uh, development of, of the country of the state. And so the governor had issued a warrant for their arrest and Silas McBee, he was trying to catch them. He's also fought against the King's Mountain, not knowing it at that time. Uh, but they went to, to kill Silas McBee. He had a bunch of dogs. <coughs> the dogs got out and run them off. And so they went down to a Moses Stigall. And that was some of my family. It's, of course, I hope I wasn't the end of this one. I, <laughs> my brother called me sometimes and said, Brother, what else have you found out about old foolish? I said, The more I find out, the less we want to be kin to them. <laughs> I think he was kin to them. Uh, or not kin to them, but had known them. But back prior to him going to see Silas McBee, of course, people at that time, time was hard. Some people would work for a living and some would just rob and steal and <coughs> keep. And that's what this group made, is they would just murder people for little or nothing. And so, but the law stayed after them. And they fled to a place called Cave in the Rock. And you know, uh, I took that picture there. That's Cave in the Rock. <coughs> that, that's the, the Hart Brothers there. Uh, this is on, you see that boat there? That's on the Ohio River. They fled to the Cave in the Rock, and that's where they made their living for a while. People coming down that river. On the, uh, uh, that's the Ohio River. And you cross over to Kentucky to over a this town called Cave in Rock. And uh, I went up there to see that and to see that cave. I took that in, that's the cave mouth side. So they, they lived in, in that cave with some other outlaws. And that's where they were robbing people. You see these cliffs here? And just for sport. Uh, one man that they had captured there on the river is they took him up on the cliff there. That's a cliff right there close to Cave and Rock. And uh, stripped uh, him off naked and put him on a horse, blindfolded him and run the horse off the cliff. Mm -hmm. And uh, Samuel Mason was, his gang was hid in there, or was in there with them. They were just all staying together. Uh, they were too gruesome for them and they ran them off. And so then we get back to, uh, they had to go back into Kentucky, and that's where they were going to kill Silas uh, McBee. And Silas' the dog run them off, so they went down to Moses to go. And there seemed to be some evidence that Moses probably knew these fellows from prior meetings. So that's why there's some question about the character of Moses to go to my cousin. <laughs> but they fled from Silas down to Moses. Moses wasn't, wasn't at home. But his wife and son was, and a major, William 
Luther, who was also at, at, at King's Mount, was there. He was a surveyor. He had, he had called on, on some business. And uh, so he stayed the night with them, and Moses had not come home yet. And during the night, they killed uh, William Love, took what he had. They killed Moses' wife and Moses' son. And then they burnt the house. And so as soon as that was found out, they formed a posse. And Silas McBeat was in the, was in the posse that pursued them. But let me back up just a little bit. There was a uh, Tompkins, a James Tompkins, that they had eaten supper with a few nights before. And he didn't have any meat. And they asked him, says, why don't you have any meat? He said, I don't have any powder. So they, the heart, big heart, gave him a cup of powder. So he'd have some to hunt with. Well, now then we jump back to the house being burned down. They started getting the posse together, Silas McBee and James Tompkins. They were part of the posse. And so they went looking for them. And it turns out they do finally catch up with him. And uh, but Big Harp, he gets shot, wounded, with the gunpowder <laughs> that he had given Tompkins a few nights earlier. That's where you got shot. Now Little Harp. He gets away, he escapes, and he comes down in the Mississippi and down the tracks. And he joins up with Samuel Mason gang, who had been in the cave there earlier. But uh, Big Hart, when they shot him and he fell off his horse, they caught him. Then, uh, Moses Stigall was there and he took his knife and uh, he started to cut Big Heart's head off. And Big Heart said, That's a dull knife, but cut on you, SOB. <laughs> <laughs> so he removed Big Heart's head. And uh, you can, if you've seen that skull, in this past. I think so, yeah, it's real small. Yeah, well that's, of course, that's, that's a markup. But uh, he takes that skull and puts it in the forks of a tree there, in uh, just above Dixon, Kentucky. And uh, that marker you can see there, that's approximately where that tree was at. And it's called uh, Hart's Road. It's named Hart's Road, and then they've got a cross, and it's Stigall's cross. Stigall's the one here. Now Stigall, he lost his wife, and he finds him another lady, and he runs off with her, and her cousin comes after him, catching they want to get their cousin back. Apparently she didn't go as willingly as maybe she ought to have. <laughs> <laughs> they caught up with it up in, in, in Illinois, that's just across the Ohio River there. And they find them, they know where they're staying in a little cabin there. And they peek through the hole or cracks in that log cabin and they see Moses sitting in there, and she's sitting in his lap, and he's romancing her. And they shoot through the crack and kill Moses to go. So anyway, that leaves Lil Harp. Lil Harp, uh, he fled to Mississippi. Near, uh, what's the place down at uh, Natchez? Under, under the boat? Under the hill. Under the hill. Under the hill. He fled to under the hill. And he gets in with uh, Samuel Mason's gang. Now, uh, 
Samuel Mason, the governor of Mississippi at that time, or he was a territorial governor, puts a, a, a bounty on his head of $2,000. So he and uh, uh, one of his partners, uh, I forget what his name was, He and his partner, they kill Samuel Mason. And they take his head, they take his head in to get a reward for it. And while he's they're trying to make sure that this is uh, Samuel Mason, that somebody rides comes up and they recognize Little Harp. He's gone by the name of John Sutton. So they recognize Little Harp. And so they just arrest Little Harp and his partner. They try them, and they're both sentenced to hang until they're dead, dead, dead. And they did, and they cut both of their heads off. And they were placed along the Natchez Trace at a place called Greenville. It's not the Greenville that we know, but if you look on the old map, there'd be a Greenville down north of Natchez there. And they put one of them's head on the south side of town and one of them's head on the north side of town. And uh, what was Archie Bunker saying? Archie Bunker, he says that uh, capital punishment has, has long been known as a deterrent to crime. <laughs> well, I think Archie had it just about right. That <laughs> but, uh, mm. but down in Chickasaw County, sometime after that, they found out from on a long near the trace out there. You remember this is around 1800. <clears throat> they find a, a dog street in the log out there, a possum, and they in that log looking. You know, and they find an old leather bag, it's tattered, but it's full of money. It's got money in it. So that's where Little Heart buried, buried some of his money that he had stole for people going up and down the trace. Of course, the trace in the book, The Devil's Backbone, and you'll see a picture of the old trace there. It's just a picture uh, through the woods. And Y'all probably seen some traveling up and down the trace. You'll see uh, the old trace in a lot of places. <laughs> but apparently, uh, that was the reason it's called the Devil's Backbone because there was a lot of robbing and killing. Because, you know, people would go down to the Ohio River on one of those boats. They could get one of those boats, like you, you see in the picture there, for a dollar a foot. They'd haul their goods there, what they'd raised down to New Orleans, sell it, and they'd come back up to the trace as the nearest way, and that's when they was getting robbed. So they found out it was better, rather than them take the boat and have to go sell it themselves, they better just let them go on and sell it and just rob them coming back. So that, that's, that's what they did. Now I mentioned to remember uh, Silas McBee. I, I found him quite interesting. As Silas McBee, he left Kentucky and he went to Alabama and he was a member of the first legislature in Alabama. Then later he came over to Mississippi down to Columbus and he uh, he became a justice of peace down there, or a squire, down at Columbus. He and his son-in-law laid out the city of Columbus. And he named the city of Columbus. And his wife, she's buried down on Magnet Creek, down in Lowndes County, she's buried down there. And uh, you'll see the, the Grave markers. That's a little ferry that crossed back forth the river up there that uh, came in the rock. That's the way I, I crossed the ferry there. And there's where the tree was that uh, uh, 
where my conscious head hangs for a long time. But uh, if you go down Highway 15 to Houston, just right at the Pontotoc County, almost before we just before we get to Pontotoc County, there'll be a Williams Cemetery on the right. Some of them call it Gershon. But that Williams Cemetery, you go out there, you'll find the grave of Silas McBee, the Revolutionary War veteran. That, that's it. I took that picture myself there. And uh, he, uh, one of his daughters was married to one of our governors was first lady. Uh, another one of his daughters was married to a U.S. senator. And I've been trying to find out which one I found that they were, but I can't find out exactly the names of who they married. But uh, if you get on the internet, you can find most of that. You won't find it written in books, but you can find it. But that's uh, pretty well the story of the Hart brothers. And uh, they were quite infamous. And I sort of enjoyed doing a little research on it. I, I did hate that my kinfolks didn't turn out to be <laughs> 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 anyway, you got a question, anybody? Okay, thank you. Well, Ted Mondy was sort of mild, according to them boys. Them yeah. <laughs> I don't have a question, I got a comment. Uh, my great great grandfather is thought was killed by the Hart. Evidently, not the Hart brothers, but Little Hart. Yeah. Coming back up the trace, they lived up in the uh, edge of Tennessee, and he carried his produce down. Well, it could very well have been by Hart. There, there. Yeah, Little Harp operated two or three years after uh, Bukaja uh, got his head cut off. Yeah, I'd love to find out the dates of, of that when he operated down here. Okay. They, see if it they operated uh, about 98 to 1798 to 1802. Okay. So, up there. Well, everywhere. They, everywhere. they were killed. Young men, they were very young, in the thir early 30s. You know, I used to go to the old uh, Capitol Theater in Memphis, pay 15 cents to see movies, and I never saw one as good as the story you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the Revolutionary Soldiers grave one day. We, we tried to get Tom Covey to go with us, but he won't. <laughs> There's a revolutionary soldier buried in the old Blue Mountain Cemetery. It's a little trouble to get there, and it's another one of those that's been pushed off by the law. But um, John Riley. He lived to be 104 years old, by the way, born in 1750, 50, 48, died in 1852. 1907, when they put my daughter put down the tombstone. Yeah, 1907. Daughters of the American Revolution from Hot Springs put his tombstone there. And it's one of three that they left. Uh, go to a uh, county line on Dry Creek, and this guy down there lived in three centuries. Take a look at his tomb. Uh, huh? Mr. Cox. Mr. Cox. Mark Cox. He sure did. It's Mike Cox. Dry Creek. Uh, the cemetery Dry, dry Creek or County Line? County Line. County Line, County Line. County Line. County Church. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think there's another older one up there, uh, Mr. Uh, your cousin, uh, um, Marjorie's husband. We, oh, Crawford. Uh, we went to uh, uh, Crawford's uh, wedding anniversary, and he said there was another, at, at, where you're talking about, there's another older cemetery uh, uh, up there away from it. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. He pointed yeah. up in the woods. Uh, uh, that may be the one you've been looking for for it, five uh, years. Crawford. We're talking about the Crawford. Uh, his daddy was a preacher. Like Daryl Crawford. Daryl Crawford. Crawford. Okay. Well, some, somebody took me, uh, let's see, it was a guy that reads the meters in Dumas and uh, 
Pine Grove, and he took me just across the line here into the woods. There is a cemetery there. Uh, we photographed the stones, but I, I don't know if it has a name or anything. I just got the information from it. Uh, if there's another one in the woods, I want to know about it too. Okay. He said it wasn't far from the church we're talking about. Okay. okay. Well, I want to know about it if we can find it. I, I stopped a lady on the road up there one time, and I said, is there a cemetery up here? Uh, just before you get down to the to the county line church with Morgan's buried in it. She said, it sure is. She said, that's the Morgan Cemetery. And I said, well, thanks. I really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, it, it, I've driven past it for months and never seen the thing before. But the Morgan Cemetery is before you get there. It's on their place. It's on your place. Nice little fence around it. You, you and I, yes, they do. They tend to it. You and I are going to have to go find the doctor's cemetery, too. Uh, I don't know where it is. I'll have to get my neighbor, Mr. Harold Williams to take you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll go. I've been over there to Tasha Holderman's place yes. when he was living, and then uh, a few years before my husband died, we, we, there's there are a few rocks there where his office was. I'll uh, do that. That's his thing. And I didn't know there was a cemetery there. Uh, it, it showed up on the, the uh, WPA cemetery list mm -hmm. from the 30s. And also, uh, you, you do know where the county dumps their uh, gravel and stuff out there across from uh, Mr. Green's cemetery. Uh, somewhere behind that, uh, and on next, Cotton Gin Road. Yeah, Cotton Gin Road. Uh, there is something called the Poor House Cemetery. Now we all know about one uh, over here at People's. Did you ever hear or have to work <coughs> around it or anything back in? I, I, all I know is that, you know, the WPA boys put it uh, on the list in the 30s, and I sure would like to know. I knocked, I talked to the fellows that work in that shop and asked them some questions and knocked on a few doors, but uh, all I can narrow it down to is a, is a mile section, and I wasn't anywhere near covering all the territory, but uh, I'd like to know where that one is. There's another green, black green, you know where it is. Uh -huh. Okay, it's a little part that, that was St. John's, I think, when they moved or something like oh, that. Oh, I didn't know that, okay. Yes, I know about that one. Okay, is there business you want to tend to? Uh, did you ever give us a camera report besides that the information, the, the hardware is here? I think I've got the camera and everything right now. You do? Yes, is that, is that my car? Oh, it's in your car, okay. The car is locked. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it, we'll work on it. Uh, I guess we need to make arrangements to go and look and see where we want to put it. I wish you would. time to... Yes. To get it all set up. Oh, well, while Tommy is here, Tommy, what do you think of uh, 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 the gym room? Uh, can we move something out of there and put it in there and operate out of that space, or is it just too little? Well, I won't put you now. I yes, you have. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I don't mean your permission, but I mean, is it is it likely that something could be used in there? Because if it they, were too big, they're going to need a place to put it. They really are. And then I'm sure they'd like to start with the information that's in there. That's what it's Can't be put in jail, don't you? That's why I kind of thought that that was the idea. Okay. Of the get -go. But that's I mean, I don't right know. Right. I'm asking. <coughs> Just helping you locate the place. Uh, did you send her back to work? Yes, I did. Oh, who balls don't? Would you check and see if the library has a place for it? And let's consider that along with the old jail. Yes? <laughs> I think a good place would be over the archive. It's fireproof. I think it's the place it ought to be. I do too. Oh, I'd, I'd like to wait till we get a new Tipper County Development Foundation director because it's, everything's sort of in there. Right? We've got to do it with them now. They have the key. They told us right. very plainly that they have the key. I, I think right. the one that runs is so better right now. He is? She is. She is. Oh, he's going to have that <laughs> Oh, across the road? No, no, the one that runs the office. Yeah, Mark. Oh, the yeah, secretary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but the, we don't have we don't have a new Tippecanoe County Development Foundation head yet, do we? No. Have you applied for it? Have I applied for it? Oh, I sure haven't. <laughs> I think that would be a good place for it. And you, and you got room to work there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you gonna put that for me? Right. That we think that the archive, the old jail archive is the best place to put our camera. 
I, is it, is it going to be small enough that we can move from one place to the other, can move it to the library for a while, and if we're going to work on it? Hey, I mean, I, I think it. it's it's not going to be immovable. The uh, Mormons bring it here from Salt Lake City. I know we can get yeah. it across town. So I, I'd, like, I'd like to move it from the library to work on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right over there to work that's, that's why I'm trying to ease you into the gym room over You're going to need a place to put that, and there's lots of work to be done just in the genealogy room. So we could go, we could go ahead and set it up in the library to begin with and get the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It needs to be restricted to people that, that know right. how to use the thing so they don't mess it up or delete something. Well, next time I see Mr. Bullard, I'll tell him who has the key. How about that? Well, it's your price. You can do what you want to with it. You can't get your camera if you know what you're doing. It should be you too. It's everybody's money. Yeah, but you know, you know, just put my it wife is there. giving you permission to do what you want to do. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we need somebody that's, that's, that's capable of operating the thing without messing it up. Well, give, give we, us all we got it. Got it. Got it. No, give us a lesson in how to operate. Okay, thing. now yeah. let's see. Uh, uh, you're. you're <coughs> was going to put us in touch with the group and we were of uh, uh, Latter-day Saints and we we're going to have a meeting with them. And, uh, they, they wanted to. They wanted other people to be using their right. idea. Right. Could you put that well, on? I, I don't think it ought to be available to just anybody who wants to go in and use it. It ought, to be, it ought to be limited to people that know how to use it and pick members, of, members of this organization who owns the camera. And the computer. I'd love to see it done. Make sure right. get this right. could be the second happiest day of my life. I mean, to have that thing set up and be the first happiest day is when Pat asked me to marry her, and I love that. that was <laughs> but now I'd love to have the thing set up in the archive over there for us to copy material. Right. And something, right. something besides those big county books too. There's lots of things to copy. There's a lot of stuff that hasn't been copied. Uh, thank you for the in report. Fact, there, there's still, there's still yeah. records in the. Up, upstairs in the courthouse that had never even been moved over. Yes. 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 Hey, now, we, now we're talking. We can start in the courthouse if we need to now. Let me, let me say this. I know the school records are in there. Go ahead. The, uh, the archives over there, the former jail, I know it's a good security, it's seasoned good, it's built to gear out of bone. Oh, well, this had enough time the concrete <laughs> order to be settled down. Concrete <laughs> 1937. 1937. That's right. I can't remember too much about it. But. I think it's still secure. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Yes. I think you might want to use that to talk to them. You can probably be sure it's their house. We're not going to worry about who gets in charge. I mean, they can have the key. It's fine. We just want your phone number then when we have something. One more thing. I, I would like to have a little, some kind of a little plaque fastened to the camera. Yes. And fastened to the uh, computer. So that everybody knows who it belongs to. Okay. Otherwise, it's liable to get carried off somewhere. Is that going in the minutes, Marshall? <coughs> I mean, it's a good idea. I'd like to see that done, too. Have some kind of code or password to get into it. Nobody right. else knows. Right, password. Right. Right. We have to vote on, vote on which part of it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, we haven't decided where we're going to put it yet, but when we do, uh, it, are you in favor of our identifying it as belonging to the Tippecanoe County Genealogical and Historical Society? Would right. you raise your hands if you favor that? I believe that was what we said, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, now look, Ms. Blint, $15 and you can vote. <laughs> <laughs> She's been thinking about floating along to see. <laughs> And remember those three people out of town, too. They can mail in their votes if they want to. Uh, okay, thank you. I'm in favor of it. Uh, is there business of any kind you want to conduct before we dismiss? We need to see people that we have in the organization. B and I. That's right. That's right. Betty Wilbanks is a golden living. She's recovering uh, nicely. Uh, and uh, But uh, it was a broken... Uh, it was that, you know, that old person break. I mean, you're just standing there and it does that, you know. And, then she failed twice trying to get in her car. And so uh, she's been at the hospital, had the surgery, now she's a golden living. Uh, she, you, you won't be put off if you go visit her, she's still pleasant. Uh, and, uh, but but she, we don't know, she's slow about the therapy. We don't know if it's because of the break in her age or what, but uh, uh, we understand it that full-time therapy hadn't started up yet. And when James comes in, 
bad as these for losing pneumonia. Evelyn Jamison had pneumonia. That's why she's not here tonight. And I've just heard I'd give you a better report. I don't know. But Pat called to tell him about the meeting, I guess, and I uh, ended up talking to Regina. And Marjorie's done it back in good health to get out of house with you. Marjorie? Mm -hmm. Marjorie has a son visiting her today. She also she says her leg's not working that way yet. And her leg doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, she fell. She fell, didn't she? Marjorie's got Yes, I see you had trouble falling, but it wasn't any particular fall. Yes. But they carried her to the doctor and then they put her in the nursing home. But she is at home. She's yes, she's at home. Yes. She, these old lady colleagues at Golden Spring. She's right there. Old lady is also a Golden Lady. I don't know if she did. She failed again. She failed again. She failed again. She failed again. What did she fail? Fractured this? What did she fail? Did she break something? Oh, she cracked her spine. Oh, and she, mm -hmm. she fell at her daughter's. Yeah. Uh, have we covered oh, business? Yes. Well, while you're on Golden Lady, Larry Bird is up there now. Larry Bird? Mm -hmm. Somebody told me. Larry Bird, he played basketball for <laughs> Larry Bird, who? There's a farmer. Thank you. I know who he is. I bought a field from him once. I know exactly who he is. Larry Bird, thank you. Go in, we can go to go and let him spend the day. Probably eat lunch with him. We could. Okay. Uh, March the Okay. Okay. Uh,